Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us now go to the one, the only, Max Kaiser, joining us from Paris, France. He, of course, is the inventor of the Hollywood Stock Exchange system. Uh, he, of course, uh, also is a uh, retired former top uh, broker, and he is a TV host and columnist. And he joins us because I thought in the last few days we got to get Kaiser on uh, to give us his take on dollar plunges after U.N. call to ditch the greenback. That's what AP, Reuters, CNN all said. The answer to the depression, they're now admitting it's going to be a depression, been in one for two years, is we'll give the very banks that sold us tens of trillions in derivatives and are above the law and won't tell Congress where the money is, we'll let them have a global government we pay taxes to, Max, and then all our currencies will be denominated and they'll be able to manipulate things even more. So I thought we'd get... Uh, you on uh, as a, a former insider uh, who really understands how this works to talk about this new system. Uh, break it down for us, Max Kaiser. Well, it's no, it should be no secret to the people listening to your show and uh, you know the guests that you have brought onto your show have made this point over the past few years and uh, the issuance of a new global currency is uh, really a fait accompli because the need for all the banks to resecuritize and repackage all that bad debt uh, and put it into some new entity, some new global bank, as a way to, to, to two, uh, two benefits to this. Number one, all the bankers get another fee for having repackaged all the bad debt. And number two, they get to push the liability when, you know, the, 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 the day of reckoning down the, kick the can down the road, hopefully a few months or a year or two. Uh, but they're willing to sacrifice America's sovereignty as an independent nation to get this goal accomplished. And this is a huge problem because you've got the banks on Wall Street who are acting in ways that are not consistent with what, what's in the interest of, of all Americans from coast to coast. They're, they're acting at cross purposes to, to America. Now, let me point your direction to something on Bloomberg. July 1, Federal Reserve uh, Chairman Ben Bernanke uh, and uh, New York Fed Timothy Geithner told senators on Jan April 3rd of 2008 that the tens of billions of dollars in assets the government agreed to purchase and the rescue of Bear Stearns were, quote, investment grade. What we just discovered today, or in the last couple of days, is what the, these, these things that they put on the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve were not investment grade. They were not even junk. They were pure uh, trash, pure garbage. They gave the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a, essentially at this point the People's Bank, pure garbage in exchange for Treasury bills that they used to pay themselves those huge bonuses in 2008 and 2009 and 2010. It's, it's an act of pure, you know, it's, it's, it's illegal. It's, it's, of course it's illegal. Um, you're not allowed, the Federal Reserve is not allowed to make loans, unsecured loans. And when the banks gave them paper that was worthless. It had no worthless, no value whatsoever. Uh, they just had a, a notation on a piece of paper saying something like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, here, here's what they called it. They called it HG-COL Limited. That's all, they, that's all set on a piece of paper. For that, the Federal Reserve gave them 10, 20, 30 This is just total, total bank robbing. And now Bloomberg comes out and the government admits that all the major big Federal Reserve holding banks, you know, the big six, are knee deep in hundreds of billions of narcotics money knowingly. Now, that's not news to us, but this is now admitted. And they're also coming out and admitting that it's $600 trillion in derivatives in the Washington Post and that the financial re-regulation package actually gives the Federal Reserve total control over all the other banks so they can rob real local banks and credit unions. And so they can also uh, take control of any institution that affects the economy. So we're seeing a total banking dictatorship. It's like you robbed everyone and, are, and make Madoff look like a saint. We're going to give you godlike power. That will teach you. Well, I'll tell you what's going on in France, and you, you, this will give something that you haven't heard from anybody else. This is something happening right here in France. The French government, of course, is trying to get rid of Goldman Sachs, as are other governments in Europe, because, because they have anti-terrorist laws, and these banks are acting as terrorists. So what they're doing is they're introducing new laws, and they're trying to get rid of Goldman Sachs by introducing new financial obscenity laws. So in other words, instead of...
they're trying to legally build a case that Goldman Sachs should leave the country because they're breaking the law, it doesn't seem that's enough. You know, the public doesn't seem to mind that they're breaking the law. The fact that they're committing acts of moral outrage, again, the public doesn't seem really concerned that the bank is committing acts of moral outrage. So in the French courts right now, they're trying to introduce a new concept called financial obscenity, where they equate the actions of Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan to kiddie porn. And they say, these guys are kiddie pornographers. In a sense, they're, they're financial pornographers. And the reason that they're going down this path is they made the observation that in America, two things are quite sacred, freedom of speech and private property. And they noticed that on the freedom of speech route, the way that a lot of these corporations were able to bypass the freedom of speech laws were to make things obscene. So they said, well, for example, they're trying to shut down the Internet because they are trying to protect you from quote-unquote obscenity. So the anti-obscenity laws are very, very powerful. So in the French government right now, what they're trying to do is to make a case for financial obscenity, saying Lord Blank finds it as the, the equivalent of a kitty pornographer and that he should be uh, gone, go, go to jail as such. And so this is a new kind concept in Europe because they're infested with banking vermin. Uh, down in Greece, in, in Ireland, in Iceland, the banking vermin, the Goldman Sachs, the J.P. Morgans, the cockroaches that have come in and totally destroyed the economies here in Europe. They can't get rid of them. They, the laws aren't strong enough to get rid of this plague uh, of banking. Well, Max, uh, I want to talk uh, more about know, that. Uh, terrorists. Max, so the, yeah. I mean, I want to talk more about that, and, and, and this is profound what you're talking about, but you're influential on the continent of Europe. You're influential here in the U.S., but very influential all over the biggest TV and radio stations there, national French TV, national uh, Greek TV, uh, and, and, and so you are having a big effect. I would uh, have you recommend that people go after the central bankers this way, because this is the most profound information I have to basically give to the public. And it's something that's hidden in plain view. You've talked about it. I've talked about it. But I want us to take a deep breath in this spectrum of obscenity and corruption and just stuff that's so off the chart criminal. You know, banking heads saying, we won't tell you where trillions of taxpayer money went. We're just not going to tell you. And the congressmen are so castrated, they say, yes, sir. I mean, this is a level of just absurdity that it's almost like a spell we're under. But let me break the spell this way. The way to go after these banks is this way. They are basically foreign, private, corporate, international pirates, bigger financially than any one government in the world. They've created tens of trillions, or really thousands of trillions, in fiat toxic weaponry. And we're worried about 11 Russian spies uh, who tried to infiltrate Harvard and Wall Street because that's who's hijacked America. You don't infiltrate Congress. You don't infiltrate the State Department because they're just little political whores that follow orders. You infiltrate the Ivy League crooks. So, yes, those are Russian spies, obviously. But the point is they didn't infiltrate the government because we don't have a government. And, and, and I want this to really boil in. Globalism is the international lawlessness uh, of these globalists legalized by them. And so what they are is foreign espionage, corporate takeover spies, and they should all be arrested for sedition and for espionage, trying to overthrow our countries and hand our money supplies over to their new global government. I mean, it, it's so elementary. It's so hidden in plain view. That's how you go after them. This is espionage. They have come in and taken over our governments, and they have taken over the Greece government. They've taken over the Spanish government, and they're not going to give us quarter, and they're a bunch of arrogant, uh, uh, Eddie Haskell bastards, and it's either us or them. Now, now, Max, what about that mindset, really beating the drum that this is a corporate hostile takeover, and it is espionage? It is financial terrorism. As you've said, we're being conquered. I don't think it's a bad route to take. Um, I would add also the idea of racketeering. Uh, you know, that's one thing sorely missing from the prosecution of these guys because the rating agencies and investment banks and the fund managers and the banks on Wall Street are colluding. They have a racket. And just like uh, Al Capone was taken down, his racket eventually was was taken down, this, this racket has to be taken down. The Goldman Sachs makes folks are engaged in racketeering. There are anti-racketeering laws on the books. It's 
what, uh, if you if you recall, uh, Giuliani, when he was still uh, running the courts in New York City, he went after Drexel Burnham using these laws. And uh, you had uh, also the recent, uh, uh, you know, um, Elliot Spitzer was the sheriff of Wall Street. He was building a case, anti-racketeering case. It's a very powerful way to go after these guys. Uh, and unfortunately, there's nobody in politics or in the legal system in the U.S. that is an independent enough to simply take the laws that are on the books against racketeering. And clearly it is a case of racketeering. When the Moody's Investment Agency downgrades the debt of Greece the day after there's a huge sell-off in the Greek debt by the hedge funds that Moody's is friendly with, that's a racket. That is not to be condoned in a free market system. So it's the case should be cut and dry. Exactly. And, and Max. Stand up and make that case. 